the crisis nihilism and the idea of recurrence by friedrich nietzsche eighteen forty four to nineteen hundred from the will to power book one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the crisis nihilism and the idea of recurrence extreme positions are not relieved by more moderate ones but by extreme opposite positions and thus the belief in the utter immorality of nature and in the absence of all purpose and sense are psychologically necessary attitudes when the belief in god and in an essentially moral order of things is no longer tenable nihilism now appears not because the sorrows of existence are greater than they were formerly but because in a general way people have grown suspicious of the meaning which might be given to evil and even to existence one interpretation has been overthrown but since it was held to be the interpretation it seems as though there were no meaning in existence at all as though everything were in vain it yet remains to be shown that this in vain is the character of present nihilism the mistrust of our former valuations has increased to such an extent that it has led to the question are not all values merely allurements prolonging the duration of the comedy without however bringing the unravelling any closer the long period of time which has culminated in an in vain without either goal or purpose is the most paralyzing of thoughts more particularly when one sees that one is duped without however being able to resist being duped let us imagine this thought in its worst form existence as it is without either a purpose or a goal but inevitably recurring without an end in non-entity eternal recurrence this is the extremest form of nihilism nothing purposelessness eternal european form of buddhism the energy of knowledge and of strength drives us to such a belief it is the most scientific of all hypotheses we deny final purposes if existence had a final purpose it would have reached it it should be understood that what is being aimed at here is a contradiction of pantheism for everything perfect divine eternal also leads to the belief in eternal recurrence question has this pantheistic and affirmative attitude to all things also been made possible by morality at bottom only the moral god has been overcome is there any sense in imagining a god beyond good and evil would pantheism in this sense be possible do we withdraw the idea of purpose from the process and affirm the process notwithstanding this were so if within that process something were attained every moment and always the same thing spinoza won an affirmative position of this sort in the sense that every moment according to him has a logical necessity and he triumphed by means of his fundamentally logical instinct over a like confirmation of the world but his case is exceptional if every fundamental trait of character which lies beneath every act and which finds expression in every act were recognized by the individual as his fundamental trait of character this individual would be driven to regard every moment of his existence in general triumphantly as good it would simply be necessary for that fundamental trait of character to be felt in oneself as something good valuable and pleasurable now in the case of those men and classes of men who were treated with violence and oppressed by their fellows morality saved life from despair and from the leap 
into non-entity for impotence in relation to mankind and not in relation to nature is what generates the most desperate bitterness towards existence morality treated the powerful the violent and the masters in general as enemies against whom the common man must be protected that is to say emboldened strengthened morality has therefore always taught the most profound hatred and contempt of the fundamental trait of character of all rulers i e their will to power to suppress to deny and to decompose this morality would mean to regard this most thoroughly detested instinct with the reverse of the old feeling and valuation if the sufferer and the oppressed man were to lose his belief in his right to contemn the will to power his position would be desperate this would be so if the trait above mentioned were essential to life in which case it would follow that even that will to morality was only a cloak to this will to power as are also even that hatred and contempt the oppressed man would then perceive that he stands on the same platform with the oppressor and that he has no individual privilege nor any higher rank than the latter on the contrary there is nothing on earth which can have any value if it have not a modicum of power granted of course that life itself is the will to power morality protected the botched and bungled against nihilism in that it gave every one of them infinite worth metaphysical worth and classed them all together in one order which did not correspond with that of worldly power and order of rank it taught submission humility etc admitting that the belief in this morality be destroyed the botched and the bungled would no longer have any comfort and would perish this perishing seems like self-annihilation like an instinctive selection of that which must be destroyed the symptoms of this self-destruction of the botched and the bungled self-vivisection poisoning intoxication romanticism and above all the instinctive constraint to acts whereby the powerful are made into mortal enemies training so to speak one's own hangmen the will to destruction as the will to a still deeper instinct of the instinct of self-destruction the will to non-entity nihilism is a sign that the botched and bungled in order to be destroyed that having been deprived of morality they no longer have any reason to resign themselves that they take up their stand on the territory of the opposite principle and will also exercise power themselves by compelling the powerful to become their hangmen this is the european form of buddhism that active negation after all existence has lost its meaning it must not be supposed that poverty has grown more acute on the contrary god morality resignation were remedies in the very deepest stages of misery active nihilism made its appearance in circumstances which were relatively much more favorable the fact alone that morality is regarded as overcome presupposes a certain degree of intellectual culture while this very culture for its part bears evidence to a certain relative well-being a certain intellectual fatigue brought on by the long struggle concerning philosophical opinions and carried to hopeless scepticism against philosophy shows moreover that the level of these nihilists is by no means a low one only think of the conditions in which buddha appeared the teaching of the eternal recurrence would have learned principles to go upon just as buddha's teaching for instance had the notion of causality etc what do we mean today by the words botched and bungled 
in the first place they are used physiologically and not politically the unhealthiest kind of man all over europe in all classes is the soil out of which nihilism grows this species of man will regard eternal recurrence as damnation once he is bitten by the thought he can no longer recoil before any action he would not extirpate passively but would cause everything to be extirpated which is meaningless and without a goal to this extent although it is only a spasm or a sort of blind rage in the presence of the fact that everything has existed again and again for an eternity even this period of nihilism and destruction the value of such a crisis is that it purifies that it unites similar elements and makes them mutually destructive that it assigns common duties to men of opposite persuasions and brings the weaker and more uncertain among them to the light thus taking the first step towards a new order of rank among forces from the standpoint of health recognizing commanders as commanders subordinates as subordinates naturally irrespective of all the present forms of society what class of men will prove they are strongest in this new order of things the most moderate they who do not require any extreme forms of belief they who not only admit of but actually like a certain modicum of chance and nonsense they who can think of man with a very moderate view of his value without becoming weak and small on that account the most rich in health who are able to withstand a maximum amount of sorrow and who are therefore not so very much afraid of sorrow men who are certain of their power and who represent with conscious pride the state of strength to which man has attained how could such a man think of eternal recurrence the periods of european nihilism the period of obscurity all kinds of groping measures devised to preserve old institutions and not to arrest the progress of new ones the period of light men see that old and new are fundamental contraries that the old values are born of descending life and that the new ones are born of ascending life that all old ideals are unfriendly to life born of decadence and determining it however much they may be decked out in the sunday finery of morality we understand the old but are far from being sufficiently strong for the new the periods of the three great passions contempt pity destruction the periods of catastrophes the rise of a teaching which will sift mankind which drives the weak to some decision and the strong also End of the Crisis, Nihilism, and the Idea of Recurrence by Friedrich Nietzsche from The Will to Power, Book One.